Hello, this is Dean Fitz with another part of my Death March walkthrough. This time, starting Blood and Wine, seeing how we're done with Hearts of Stone. This contains spoilers throughout, so if you've not played this fantastic DLC, you might want to come back after you have played the first part, and so you don't get too spoiled. Now, it starts off with us investigating a corpse that we found in the river, and then you eventually end up here at Corvo Bianco, and you have to fight a Bruxer. Now, Bruxer is a vampire, and you don't fight very many of the vampires, uh, before Blood and Wine, but you do end up fighting them more as you go through this particular DLC. So you use Urgent, and the Superior Moon Dust Bomb is particularly useful, because the female vampires in particular are very mobile, and they can move and jump around a lot, and so it helps a lot to be able to stop them and to keep track of them a little bit easier with the Moon Dust as well. So you can also use Urgent to slow them down, Rend and Whirl are both very effective as well. You can see here she isn't even breaking Quen because of protective coating and the Ursine armor and Outcast Decoction, just like normal. So you take her down, and then it progresses to the point where Geralt needs to speak to the Duchess and the Henrietta. So you go and you find her at the Tawny Grounds, and they are in the middle of trying to put on a show uh, with a Shalemar, which is a new type of uh, monster that we haven't fought in Witcher 3 before, and is exclusive to this DLC. Now they're very powerful enemies, but like a bat, they are blind. Now you can see some of the subtleties and genius of Witcher 3 and when you're fighting these particular enemies. So you can see there the knight was clanging the sword against his shield and the Shellmars are blind and they use echolocation to locate the targets. Now normally this can be, fighting Shellmars can be extremely difficult especially because you won't be used to one. But if you were to read the bestiary entry, which you can find a book in Tucson which will tell you about it, or after you've defeated this first Shalmar, the bestiary entry would tell you about the fact that they use echolocation. So you can use either a salmon bomb or ard, and you can make vibrations off a, a wall or the wall of the cave, or in this case the wall of the arena. So they are relics, so you make sure that you have relic oil to do extra damage and to take less damage in turn. But as you can see here, if you either throw a salmon bomb or use ard against the wall of the arena, you turn around and the Shellmar will try and hit it from echolocation and then it will knock itself out on the wall. So it takes a massive leap, gets knocked straight out and you can get at its soft underbelly. I didn't even use Thunderbolt here and you can see that I take it down in one whirl by the time it even stands up. That makes a protracted fight a lot easier and just a part of the genius of Witcher 3. So after you continue and you um, try and find the victims, uh, the next victim, and his identity, you find out that you're just too late. Make sure that you choose the greenhouse as the location when you're trying to solve the riddle, because that uh, is useful for proving your wisdom later. So after this brilliant little chase scene, you're chasing a humanoid enemy with very large long claws uh, on its hands, which can sort of teleport and mu move with inhuman grace and agility. So in case you haven't guessed it by now, I'm sure you have that this enemy is a higher vampire, which is particularly interesting because you read a lot about them through the game. So this is the first time you get the crack at the Beast of Toussaint, and as you might have guessed, it needs vampire oil, and the superior moon dust is quite helpful, not as helpful as with the Bruxa or the Alps, which are another type of the female um, vampires, but useful nonetheless. So you make sure you have your vampire oil for protective coating, and uh, basically you can just do the usual things with this fight, just be aware that these high vampires are extremely dangerous and this one in particular is a particularly strong enemy and uh, he can block your whirl attacks with their claws. So whirl won't be guaranteed hits so you need to use Erdin, uh, much like when you're fighting Olgierd Mon Evric. You can use Erdin to get in a few more hits and you can use Rend with the Severance that we have on the Mastercrafted Ursine Sword to be able to hit him from a bit uh, further of a distance away. And your Quen can still take multiple hits because even though this is a strong enemy, our build is even stronger. So because we've got the Ursine, the Arrakat and the Protective Coating with the Vampire Oil, you can take a bunch of hits here. So you can use the Superior Moon Dust to again keep track of him a little bit um, and then also using Random Will keep his health down. So it's a very fun fight and uh, it's one that it makes you actually feel like you are fighting a, a properly strong enemy as well which is tons of fun. And also if you can get a hit in when he's doing certain ones of his charge attacks you can slow him down much like when you fight an Allgaard and you can stun him and get some hits in with Random Will. So when you've completed this fight, uh, Geralt will very nearly have met his match and is in grave danger until an old friend comes along and this is an introduction of one of the best characters in Blood and Wine and uh, one of the characters who really makes it such a fantastic DLC. So I'll not spoil too much more of that, but this is what happens so you complete the fight and after you've completed this the next story mission will be level 39 so you've got a bit of breathing room before you need to do the next mission, although you do get a lot of experience from this as well. 
So now you'll have free reign of Toussaint again, and you also get gifted a home from Anna Henrietta, and it can be upgraded. So this is some of the things that we need to look out for before we carry on with the story missions. And we can also get the Grand Master gear at level 40. So this is after I've done one or two of these missions. Father Knows Worst is a mission where if you can uh, spare the brothers at the end of it, you can show wisdom. And also Hugo, who you spare, will buy things at full price, like the actual full price. So that's quite useful. Uh, there's also There Can Only Be One, which you can pick up from the notice board near the bank. And it will uh, tell you about the five chivalric virtues of the Toussaint region. And if you go and learn about those, it will keep track of which ones you've proven. And you need to prove five of those. So you need to prove one, one of each, uh, all five, to get the best sword in the game. So you need to make sure that you're tracking that quest. You can also, like I say, you get gifted Covo Bianco, which is your own villa and it needs extensive upgrades because it's fallen into repair. It costs 14,000 crowns in total, and we'll come on to that in just a minute. There is also goodness gracious great balls of granite, which is an interesting side mission, as well as being very fun, uh, which has a bonus where you can get unlimited stamina for an hour. And then this part of the map is where you will um, send Hugo if you rescue him. This is where he returns. And like I say, he buys things for full price. So he'll buy like a trophy for 500 crowns instead of 50 and all that. So that's a good one to do as well. So once you've completed the goodness gracious great balls of granite and you've returned the stones to the statue, you can get the power of Reginald as you can see there in the top left. And that will give you um, infinite stamina outside of battle for 68 minutes. So free running, free jumping and your stamina never wears down, which is quite a nice little bonus. After you start upgrading Covo Bianco, like I say, it costs 14,000 crowns in total, so the first three upgrades cost 7,000. And after you've upgraded that and the time has passed, you'll find this laboratory underneath the home. And as well as granting your potions and bombs an extra one per use, so six instead of five in the most cases, uh, you also find this alchemy laboratory and it will convert the monster mutagens, like wraith mutagens, into the lesser version, in like a lesser cult version, which is useful because you can then combine those to be able to get 6 instead of 5, and the library gives you a 5% experience bonus. And the herb garden gives you the herbs to convert green and blue mutagens into red mutagens, which is good because the red ones are rarer and you can unlock more mutations using those. Next, at level 39, the priority is to start the Grandmaster gear quest so that we can get the diagrams because the Grandmaster gear can be used from level 40. Now we start with the Manticore one and you complete the full quest to be able to finish the Master 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 quest. And also the Manticore gear is really good because most of the Grandmaster sets need enriched Dimeritium and infused Lazard Hides whereas these only need regular Dimeritium. It's an offensive set, not a defensive set, but we do want to use some pieces of it. And the Grandmaster sets need uh, infused Slizard Hides and enriched Dimeritium. Now those are extremely expensive and they're also pretty a uh, little bit tricky to craft and need some certain special items from the Blood and Wine region. But the Manticore gear will uh, cost less and it only needs regular Dimeritium and regular Draconic Hides so it's much easier and cheaper to craft. Um, and in addition to that it has some really good little boosts like it gives a each piece gives a boost to toxicity and the boots and the chest give a critical hit damage percentage increase and so we're going to use the boots with the ursine chest as part of our main set so you can see here if you see the grand master set infused lazard hides and the enriched dimeritium plate which you have to make the ingots from ore and then you have to make the plates from the ingots so getting those costs a lot of money but you'll already have plenty of dimeritium i would hope from the main game and uh, from dismantling swords that can be uh, made into dimeritium ingots or or as well and so you can just create a dimeritium plate and make the manticore boots now like i say the manticore boots have good monster resistance good slashing distance di resistance and they also give a little bit of a toxicity boost and also a uh, critical hit increase which is why we're using them so those are really uh, excellent boots and the ones that we use for our main set now the chest armor that we want to use is the Grandmaster Ursine armor and it will take two of these enriched Dimeritium plates and two of the infused Lazard hides. Now the infused Lazard hides aren't that bad to make um, but the enriched Dimeritium plates are pretty 
expensive. Now, if you buy one, they are 4,500 each. So on top of 4,000 need crowns needed to craft the actual armor chest piece itself, you'd be paying 9,000 to buy two of those. So we're going to craft them instead. Now, again, the Manticore trousers only use regular dimeritium instead of enriched dimeritium. And so they're a lot cheaper to make than any of the other trousers. The ones we're going to stick with for the most part are going to be the Nilfgaardian DLC trousers, and then we'll get the upgraded Invic ones later on. But we're also going to craft the Manticore ones for their elemental resistance for fighting wraiths. Now for the swords, the master crafted swords uh, give good damage, but the Grandmaster are better. But if you look here, there is very little difference between the Grandmaster Ursine and the regular one apart from the damage. Now the Manticore Silver Sword and Steel Sword, again, they only use regular Dimeritium instead of having to make the Enriched, and they are much cheaper, so they're about 1500 crowns less, 1500 crowns less each than the Grandmaster Ursine equivalents. So if you're struggling for money and you don't quite have the money to craft the enriched dimeritium ingots for the swords you could always go with the manticore ones instead now the difference is that they are 25 percent less critical hit damage and they have um, armor piercing and bleeding bonus instead of the adrenaline um, adrenaline and dismemberment bonus so they are still very very good swords and uh, they would take like i say a lot less expense so you can always get those instead but if you have the extra money you can craft the enriched dimeritium ingots and make the grandmaster ursan ones instead now, the main part, the main attraction is the chest piece and to make the to make the two enriched dimeritium plates we need four enriched dimeritium ingots and so we need two enriched dimeritium ore for each of those so we need eight in total. Now you should be able to get orihalcum from crafting it in the crafting uh, components list so I've got some orihalcum here already and then you can make eight of the enriched dimeritium ore, convert those into four ingots, convert the four ingots into dimeritium plate, and even with the crafting costs of making the orihalcum and then crafting through each level, it's much, much cheaper than buying the two plates for 9,000 outright. So you should always try and craft those. And we're sticking with the Nilfgaardian Guardsman Gauntlets for the critical hit damage and the good resistances. And that's a bonus of using this particular uh, build of mine, is that you only need the Grandmaster Ursine armor, and then the Manticore boots are cheaper to make, and the pants and the uh, ga gauntlets we use slightly cheaper alternatives, even though the stats balance out and are actually very, very strong. So it's a good balance, and we make sure that we get those as well. So when we've crafted that, if you have enough money to have got the level 3 of the rune right from hearts of stone you can also put levity on the chest piece and we'll come to that and get cat school techniques in a moment but it isn't really necessary the build is extremely powerful now you can see that's the boost with the euphoria applied to it and we're doing massive amounts of damage we also craft the viper armor and the manticore trousers so that anytime we're fighting wraiths we can switch to those because those two pieces have extremely high elemental resistance put severance on the manticore sword so we've got both of the manticore swords or if you've had the spare crowns which see yeah, i could have done there and probably will do later, you can have the Grandmaster Ursine ones instead. But either way, your damage is extremely high. We've got the Grandmaster Ursine with its increased um, resistances and that has levity, making everything else light. But even if you don't, you have extremely strong damage and the Cat School techniques isn't really necessary to be doing that high damage anyway. Nilfgaardian Guardsman's Gauntlets and we've also crafted Greater Glyphs of Mending, which again, you would need the level 3 of the room right for. And those are a bonus, not a necessity. If you do craft those, craft them with Joanna as she is the cheapest prices for doing that. If you have levity on the chest piece, it will make all the gear light, so you can swap cat school techniques, use one point to unlock that, and swap it for tissue transmutation, shift your skills around as shown on the right, and that adds 100% critical hit damage. But again, that's not a massive deal at the moment because we don't have killing spree, so we'll just be doing critical hits about 25% of the time instead of 100, and we can finish off the build properly in New Game Plus, but this is what will carry us through a lot of blood and wine. So it's an extremely powerful build, we are very much set up now, and we've got the high resistances you can see there, the slashing and uh, monster resistance are extremely high. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video, you can see just here the elemental resistance that we put in. Please like and subscribe, and I'll be back with more to continue Blood and Wine after this. Thank you very much, bye bye.